Okay, good morning everybody. Um, we're delighted to be here. Um, I'd like to begin by um, thanking the panel, first of all, for the seed funding that we were awarded to amalgamate and join together two projects um, from last year's rounds of proposals. Um, and to assure the panel and everybody else that we've made very good use of the funding, we've completely integrated both of the, pro the projects within a redesigned framework around digital literacies, as you'll see here in our title, um, which are specific to the language learning and teaching context. And we've done this with the advice of an international consultant and drawing on a wider network of international colleagues. So the new project, what does it look like? We're going to spend the next 15 minutes talking about the redesigned project and the, integrated, uh, the integration of the two projects. So in, um, if we had to describe, which we do in one sentence, what our project is about this year, it's about the development of a strategy-focused online resource for language learners and teachers to be fully integrated into third level, into third level Irish higher education programs, including language teacher education programs. The partners in the project this year include the University of Limerick. Um, my name is Fiona Farr and I'm from the University of Limerick. Um, the Limerick Institute of Technology and Mary Immaculate College and those three institutions form the Shannon Consortium. We also have um, Dublin partners in Dublin City University, um, our Western partner NUI Galway. Um, and finally, Dublin Institute of Technology. So we have six partners uh, um, from right across the country and across the higher education sector. To speak a little bit about what the project is going to do, um, this year we plan to develop, to pilot and implement a set of integrated digital resources to support a new framework for building digital capacity in language teaching and learning in higher education contexts. At the moment, none exists. There's a lot of very good work going on within the institution, but there isn't a framework um, for building digital capacity within um, this particular discipline. The target audience um, for the first, we, we, I suppose in our own minds we call this the first phase because we see it as a longer term project, but for the, the funding period that's proposed, the um, portal that we're planning to design um, is for students entering or re-entering higher education. It's for students preparing to go abroad on work placements or on study abroad placements. And it's for language teacher educators and student teachers seeking to develop new professional competencies for digital language teaching. The range of projects that we will be looking at in the development phase, English as a foreign language, Irish, French, German, Italian and Spanish. And here is a visual representation of what the um, portal design looks like um, at the moment. We haven't put in a lot of the detail, but I think it gives you a broad idea of what we're aiming for. Um, so the tiles on the left represent the three core content development areas. I say content development in a very loose way because we're talking about curating and developing content, not just content development. Um, and the three groups represented across the top are the three target groups that um, I've just been talking about, or the target audience. Um, this is a unique set of resources. It's strongly set in the Irish higher education context, yet it is contextualised internationally. It caters for a range of different languages. It will be fully integrated into language curricula at third level. There's a focus on learning to learn as opposed to simply learning the language. It's unique in its structure and configuration. It can be accessed in a number of different ways, in linear ways and in non-linear ways. It has a holistic design configured around cognitive, metacognitive, and practical concepts, rather than simply by language. It includes a range of teacher development resources and tasks around the same frameworks that we will be using for the student tasks. And it provides for the creation and maintenance of a national community of practice, which we're very keen to do in order to sustain the project beyond um, the funding period. How will we do it? So here is our plan. We've got seven work packages. Um, and I'll just skip forward to this slide to talk about the work packages very briefly. So we've got the overall project coordination package, we've got a research, evalu research and evaluation package, we have the three content development packages, digital literacies, 
language learning skills and practices and transitions to third level language learning environments, including digital environments. We have a localization pilot project around the Irish language, um, and then we have technical design and development. The involvement of stakeholders has been really important to us from the very beginning of this project, and we were lucky enough to have had the opportunity during the seed funding phase to speak with a lot of the stakeholders and to carry out some very good um, preliminary research with some of the target groups and some of the stakeholders. So I'm simply listing the stakeholders here. We're going to be working with management within the institutions, with teachers, with students, with our library staff, IT support staff, learning support staff, student support and services, um, and of course um, we've already begun to establish an international advisory panel who will be um, helping us on, on our road to achieving the goals of this project. Um, in terms of evaluation, you'll be hearing a little bit more about this later on, but this is an integral part of the project, piloting the resources and the activities, external evaluation and benchmarking, um, and measuring national impact using a number of key indicators that we've included in our proposal. Okay, at this point, I'm going to um, introduce Dr. Francoise Blan, our DCU colleague. Um, Francoise is also president of Eurocall, the European Association for Computer Assisted Language Learning, and editor of CUP's Recall Journal. Um, and she's going to talk you through the um, rest of the presentation. Thanks, Francoise. Thank uh, so, uh, one of the key questions you were asking us was to you know, uh, specify the key outcomes. We've divided the key outcomes into two kind of categories. The, the immediate outcomes by which we mean the outcomes that are going to be achieved during the life cycle of the project and at the end of it, and then longer term outcomes. So uh, some of those outcomes, I mean, the, the key outcome during the life cycle of the project among the partner institution is the full integration of the framework we're going to develop and the resources and activities into our language programs. So and we are going to, to achieve this by involving all the stakeholders that uh, Fiona has listed early on. But for us this is really key. From day one all our language departments are going to be involved, uh, teachers and students, uh, into the design of uh, the portal and the activities that are uh, underpinning it. Uh, a key outcome as well is a tangible, it's this online open resource uh, center or portal which is going to provide the resources that we are going to curate or develop and they're specifically targeting language teaching. We are very aware that there's many projects in, uh, in Ireland at the moment about building digital capacity, digital literacies, but we're really focusing on the language aspect. Language is core to whatever we do with digital literacies. Key outcome for the partner institution during the lifetime of the, the life cycle of the project is that our language graduates should be equipped at the end of it with appropriate digital literacies. And finally, what, in order to do, all that, to do all that, the transforming language pedagogies is also one of our key objectives. Uh, I don't know how many of you are special, know about language teaching in higher education in Ireland, but there's still a lot of uh, discrepancies uh, between institutions and programs where you do have still uh, big gaps to fill in terms of teacher training where language lectures very often are not a linguist and are still teaching the way they were taught 30 or 40 years ago. So this is transforming pedagogies is a big issue for us. But the whole, from the, the beginning of the project, we've really built a sustainability <coughs> concepts into the project. And by sustainability, we just don't mean financial sustainability, uh, but for us the definition we've been using is you know, the, st the sustainability of this portal and the framework we're going to devise is really about meeting the present, the current needs, and the future needs of the te language teachers and language learners. So it's not just about being able to sustain uh, or prolong the life of uh, a technological uh, platform, but it's really looking at the present and future needs of our stakeholders. So we are going to have uh, you know, after the funding period is over, 
we really anticipate and we're really building that into the design from day one is we want to really make it possible for introducing, integrating further languages, additional languages into the project. A lot of the resources will be non-language specific, especially in terms of teacher education, and whether you teach Chinese, Japanese, uh, Polish, or whatever, you know, some of the, the materials there should be readily uh, useful to you. Uh, developing lifelong learning skills for teachers and language is for us a very hot topic because the whole, as you may not know or whatever, there's a big debate in the, in the applied linguistics area in second language uh, acquisition. We do not teach language anymore the way it was done 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. There's a huge paradigm shift in terms of uh, theories, of practice, and uh, lifelong learning skills, which is more than learner autonomy, and we're talking also about learner agency, are very key outcomes that we'd like to see uh, being developed uh, in the long term. One of the key long term objectives as well is really to review the way uh, language competencies are assessed. Uh, in Ireland, in the higher uh, education sector, we can see in language departments across the country, there are still a lot of uh, programs that are assessed by written exams, uh, grammar exercises, dissertations or whatever, but this is just a minute part of what being a competent language user means these days. So we need to, to have new form of assessments that are manageable, but also that integrates digital literacies, multimodality, the ability to create, share, remix uh, resources out there. The whole um, project is also really built around some ecological approaches to uh, language teaching and learning and to computer-assisted language learning. And not only do we want, if the main focus is about the language learner and the language teacher, it's also about looking at the societal needs and everything. So we, a longer term, what we hope to achieve there is also to <coughs> build the community of practice that Fiona was talking about at national level and to reform the language curricula across the country and most importantly, how we describe the programs within the national framework of qualifications of Ireland. Uh, people from the sector here will know that we all have this, uh, uh, the NFQ, which set us, you know, kind of learning, uh, program learning outcomes, and we believe that for the language programs, we need to integrate something very specific about digital literacies as well. And finally, uh, all, the, all of us here around the table and those who couldn't join us today, we're all uh, very uh, expert researchers in that area. So uh, we all, most of us have a very uh, important role internationally, so we're very well aware of the research that's going on, research and development as well, and, and we're also practitioners. So we see this project as well to be rooted in and leading to further research and development in the future. So in terms of impact on the discipline, uh, this little diagram kind of uh, summarize what we're trying to do. On the right hand side, you've got the core, the, the micro level that we're looking at, it's the language learner. So across the country, and we believe as well that internationally this will have uh, an impact, what we are really driving at is to have language learners, language graduates, that are fully equipped with the skills that they will need, the 21st century skills that they will need to function in this knowledge economy and so on. So uh, lifelong learning, lifelong language learning is key to us. Uh, we want them to be active members of uh, language communities, not just language learning communities, but uh, communities that use uh, languages other than English. Uh, and uh, also we want them to develop different type of language learning skills and of course the new literacies uh, framework that we are going to develop. This can only be done through curriculum development, not only at local level but at national level. So we are really 
the, the national impact there, what we're driving at is to have a new language programs and modules learning outcomes that would be comparable between institutions uh, in Ireland. New language pedagogies, and also some, probably some transformation in terms of organizational structures, the, whether technological or the way pro language <coughs> programs are designed, taught, and supported, supported at national and local level. But this can only be done through a lot of uh, research and dissemination. So we plan to have some regional and national workshops, so especially maybe not in the first quarter, but when the platform has something really to show, so to, to involve uh, future partners outside the six uh, original partners, uh, and so on. And we are also, uh, and all that is going to be supported by the portal. So what we have done is we have uh, defined some uh, key indicators to evaluate this impact. This is not evaluation of the project itself, but uh, the impact of uh, the project. So you have here some uh, indicators that uh, we've been working with international partners as well over the years in different projects. And this is, I'm going to thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think we're ready for questions.